We welcome you in episode 27 of the best podcast available. I'm Jason Gibbs alongside Andrew Gribble. And coming up on today's program, oh, we got a good one for you. Grant Delpit, our new safety from LSU, will join the program here in just a couple short minutes from now. Gribbs, I hope you had a fantastic Memorial Day weekend, got a chance to recharge the batteries, and I hope the kids didn't burn the house down for you. I did, and the, they didn't burn the house down because we were outside the whole time. It was, it was gorgeous. I mean, this was perfect weather, perfect time to get out and, and do outdoors things with kind of all the restrictions we still have going on. So, I mean, it was as ideal as you can get. And, and now we're you know, back to work while the weather's still nice outside, which makes it a little tougher. Yes, indeed. Although it, it's a little hot. So I'm, uh, I'm okay staying inside right now mm. and doing a little bit of work here. So it was nice to recharge the batteries. And now we're in that little period where uh, we've got the virtual off-season workouts continuing. We don't know when we're going to have mini camps or if we're going to have mini camps. Teams slowly starting to open up their facilities, though, Gribbs. We're the Browns. Who's in? Who's out? You know, people are asking – our coaches in, our players in, our front office people in. What are the rules here as we start to slowly open up here around the National Football League? Well, I think the the big thing that fans, I think, are most interested in is that at phase one for these teams does not include coaches and players. I mean, so that's that that's the the big one, and I think so. You, you're going to have some some maybe the the business side. You're going to have maybe some of the scouting side and and things like that that get back to work. But you know, these are uh, around the league, it's it's a very slow process, and and when you start throwing out numbers that are less than a hundred, that's a pretty small group uh, of employees going back to work, and it's just reflective of pretty much everything you're seeing in society. I mean, nothing is truly full fledged back to normal yet anywhere you go uh, in most states. So, uh, all these teams, I think, have an understandably very close relationship with their state government. So it, I think the clear thing is, is whatever is being advised by their government is going to be followed to a T. Because I, I think when it comes to actually playing these games, that's that's going to be the government's de- the, the decision. I mean, when you, when you come down to it. So you're going to want to be doing everything uh, on the up and up uh, and, and keeping everyone safe, and but still getting back to some semblance of, of normality here. Yeah, I, I thought it was an inter- interesting back and forth earlier in the week. Charles Robinson from Yahoo Sports coming out with a piece that had sources saying there could be mini camps potentially mid to late June. And J.C. Treader, our own center, who's the head of the Players Union, quickly stepping in and saying, not so fast, my friend. Uh, everything off-season-wise is supposed to be wrapped up by June 26th, but it does – it is going to be interesting to see what happens if everybody's allowed to go back into the building and players and coaches are allowed back in, if that schedule changes and will the players union and the owners come to an agreement on that? Yeah, I, I'd like to, I guess I, I would just be interested to hear the from the coach and, and football perspective on maybe what the value of doing a, a mini camp would be. Uh, so maybe so close to potentially when you're doing training camp. I, I, I'm sure there is a reason. I, I just wonder what what would be the, the the pros and cons of just simply waiting to get started with training camp? I mean, would that put you that far behind uh, in your usual uh, preparation for the season? It, it, it just might. And I think that, so these mini camps might be a pretty big deal uh, and something that these teams hope to execute. I just, it, it'll be interesting to see if they can, they can wrap up these discussions and, and come to a conclusion here pretty quickly. But we saw the news with New Jersey I mean, that probably is one of the last states that uh, had to give some sign-off to their teams, and then they have. So uh, I think all these NFL teams, most of them are in the clear from that regard. But putting something like this together, I mean, that, there's a lot, lot to figure out still. Yeah, no question, and something to watch as we continue to roll on through into June and getting closer to the start of the 2020 NFL season. I want to talk real quick. I want to pick your brain just to kind of clarify some things. Uh, The team has already signed three of their draft picks. Good news. Nick Harris, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Harris, and Bryant. There's a rookie salary cap in place. We know everybody's going to sign. It's just a question of when. And obviously, you want to make sure it comes down to the guaranteed money for a lot of the guys in the first and second round. um, But why it is such a good thing 
that these guys are getting signed and these deals are getting taken care of now. Uh, even though we know that they're ultimately going to happen before training camp starts, it's good to get these things done sooner rather than later. Yeah, it's just one thing to check off the list. And I, I think that the, the key thing is just it's amazing to see how far we've come as a society where these guys can have now been drafted and have signed agreed to contracts without ever setting foot in the place that they're going to work. Or a lot of these guys even setting foot in the state they're going to work. I mean, I think that's – it is pretty crazy. But I think – I haven't looked at the numbers. I think having three guys signed, it puts the Browns probably in the top half of the league at the moment right now and most uh, rookies signed. I, I imagine some of these other ones will kind of trickle in uh, as they go. And it, it just really is – it's a new era. I mean, these – this – we talk about it every year, I feel like. But it, this used to be so much more of a story, especially with these first-round picks. But now it's just it, – it, it's just almost like – not barely even a transaction, barely even a blip on the radar when a player uh, signs their deal. And I, I think that's probably a good thing. And uh, for the players, I'm sure it's a big moment for them. To start, uh, you know, get, getting whatever you can. I mean, I, I think that's it, it, that, that probably is a, a burden off these guys' shoulders. And uh, But it's one of those things where you imagine, I think we've maybe come down to the wire with one guy in the last maybe four years when it comes to training camp. I believe that was Jarrell Peppers. Uh, but even that got done. So this is this is not something to to be too concerned with, but something to celebrate and and remind yourself, hey, we drafted some good players. They're official. You move them to a different spot on the roster and you're good to go. I, again, I think you hit it right on the head. It's a thing to cross off the ch the checklist right now, especially with the fact that nothing's going on in our building. We're still making forward progress and uh, the game plan, again, once you're allowed in to be able to hit the ground running and, and this team and this front office with the help of some great IT people and some great people behind the scenes really setting themselves up for that. Yeah, and it's it's just going to be – I mean, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know when I'll be back. No idea. You'll be back. It's just going to be – it's going to be different, and, I, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, all of this is going to be a new experience this year. Uh, all the way to the end of 2020, I believe, is 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 going to be just different in a lot of ways. And I think we're already experiencing that in our everyday lives. So going back to work for a lot of us is is the next step uh, in this new normal. And that's both on on the field and off the field in all these football buildings. Yeah. Buckle up. Here we go. Welcome to the 2020 NFL season. All right. That's a look at some of the news as it pertains to the Browns right now. Time to sit down with our second round draft pick. So happy that he fell to us. Ecstatic, especially on Cleveland Browns Daily with Bo and Nathan. I know that for a fact. Grant Delpit was kind enough to give us a few minutes of his time. Have a watch and have a listen. Happy to be joined by one of our top draft picks here in the 2020 NFL Draft. Browns safety Grant Delpit joins us, making the commute from LSU to Cleveland, just like half of the rest of our football team. So, we're happy to have you, Grant. Welcome to Cleveland. Virtually, I, I should start with that. Virtually welcome to Cleveland. One day you'll actually be in the building, and it'll be great. Uh, what, has this, uh, what has this month and change been like for you since becoming a member of the Cleveland Browns? Um, you know, of course, it's been a different experience. Uh, you know, we've just been you know, doing meetings every day, um, just trying to learn the defense as fast as I can trying to get to know the guys as well. You know, it's kind of hard to get to know everybody uh, over Zoom, you know, over the phone and stuff like that. So um, it's definitely been a different experience, but it's coming along well. I think we've gotten to the routine of things. Uh, you know, A.B. and uh, Coach Stefanski have done a, a terrific job. So, you know, I'm ready. What, uh, what have you guys done to try to get to know each other? And what can you, what can you tell us about uh, some of the guys in your room that you've gotten to know over this uh, last few weeks? Yeah, uh, it, we, I mean, we meet with each other every day. Um, so, you know, of course, the meeting starts off just, you know, by talking a little, um, just about, you know, how, did, how, did, how you've been doing this past week, you know, if we meet on a, a Monday, how the weekend was and stuff like that. So uh, just getting to know, like, the vets of the room, you know, guys like Carl Joseph, Vincent Dejo, um, and guys like that's been there, you know, like Red Wine. Um, and that's just in the safety room. In the corners room, um, we got Greedy Denzel. Uh, we got D. Lou. We got a bunch of guys uh, that we just try to, you know, get to know. Um, and, you know, I'm looking for – we'll be in OTAs right now, so uh, it sucks that we can't be in Cleveland. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting up there uh, maybe in July, you know, if things start to calm down. 
what is that room like? Who's the uh, who's the prankster of the group? Who's the jokester? Uh, who, who's freewheeling and liking to have a good time? <laughs> uh, the prankster and the jokes. I don't know. It's hard because you know we take care of business in, in the meetings. Um, but before all that stuff, you know, guys like to you know joke around. So I say greedy. Greedy's the goofy one in the group. You know, he's always been like that since LSU days. Uh, <laughs> so you know, he's a great personality. But I think the room is full of great personalities, and you know, guys are gonna win. How uh, you mentioned it before we taped, but uh, how how have you been? What have you been doing to stay in shape, and how creative have, have you had to get to 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 keep up with to be in football shape without playing football? Yeah, and I'm working out every day, every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes on Saturday. Um, you know, doing the workouts that the, the Browns send us, and as well as getting your own workout in um, whenever I can. So um, it, it's 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 tough. You know, it's, we trying to not to. I'm trying not to be content with things. I'm always trying to go up and, you know, improve my game, improve my body, and make sure my body's ready to play, uh, you know, whenever we get a chance to. What has been the toughest exercise that you've had to adapt? You know, something that, that you like to do workout-wise that you've had to change based on what you have or what you don't have there? Yeah. Well, I, I think I'm kind of blessed because I have a facility to work out in. Um, and it's it's not like anybody here. It's just me and uh, Ryan Clark. Um, you know, that's he he played for Steelers back in the day. Sorry, Browns fans, but that's that's been my guy since LSU days. Um, so yeah, we've been over here just working out the facility. Um, and I know a lot of guys don't like a lot of guys are uh, you know making it up as they go. You know, that be working out in the country with I don't know some chopping trees or chopping wood or something like that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I know Jacob Phillips out there in Tennessee doing the country way. Uh, you got to ask him about that. So uh, I'll, I'll go back to draft the day two of the draft. You had to, it had to be a surreal experience when the Browns call you. And then where were you when you found out that one of your teammates was coming with you shortly thereafter? Oh yeah, I was, um, it was a great experience. Um, uh, you know, I was with my family, uh, my grandma's house when we when we got the call. It was great. Um, like you said, a couple hours later, we saw uh, Jacob's name get picked, um, and it was crazy just just to see. Uh, I'll be linking up my brother again. Um, you know, up north, uh, and I, you know, I can't wait for it. It's exciting. We have a lot of a lot of chemistry together. You guys have a lot. Uh, again, a lot of LSU Tigers up here, and. Uh, Obviously, you can't go out any better than what you did in college football with raising a national championship trophy. And what was the best moment of that season? What was the best moment of 2019 for you? Um, you know, either getting over that hump of beating Alabama. And that's something we hadn't done in, done in eight years. Um, that was a great feeling. That was a great feeling, especially doing it in Tuscaloosa. Um, and then – of course, the national championship. Um, you know, seeing all the all the you know the hard work uh, come into play, and you know, really just accomplish that goal that we've been wanting for so long. You know, it's really finally getting LSU back where it needs to be. Um, that was something that I told myself I wanted to do before uh, I even played one snap in college. Um, it was great to you know have my career end like that. You know, there, there there wasn't a lot of expectations for LSU, maybe not on the Alabama Clemson level going into the season. But when did you know that this that was a special team? Oh, I knew a special team. Um, well, I knew that we were going on the right track the year before. You know, we went to the New Year's Six Bowl. Um, I knew that we were going to improve from there. And then when we got Coach Brady and the offense um, really took off. I knew it was going to be. You know, so it was going to be hard stopping us. Um, like, even in camp, you know, the offense would score, run up the score in our defense. I'm like, okay, either our defense is going to be really, you know, bad or our offense is going to be really good. So, you know, thankfully it was the offense is really good. So, um, it was just great having having them do that thing and us do ours, and it really came together. Now, obviously you, you win a national championship in LSU, and we all know the rivalry with LSU and Alabama and the SEC in general, but – you guys really do pull for each other post-college. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff from uh, players on both sides. Even, you know, Jedrick uh, with some nice things to say, but you guys really have, have stuck by each other. Obviously, when you play each other that week, everything goes out the window and will go out the window. But 
the SEC really is that little tight fraternity of guys that really support each other after the fact. Yeah, it's a tight fraternity. I, I don't I don't know if I'll say pulling for, you know, that's just kind of tough, like LSU pulling for LSU. I don't know. But that that might it might be a competition. I say it's competition. You know, everybody wants to have the best production coming out of college, you know, in the league. So that's that's really what the, the competition is. Uh, so I think that we just all competitive in the SEC. And we are tight knit, you know. I'll say that we would want to see the SEC win if another SEC school, you know, loses. But um in the league, I think it's all competition. Did you ever think for a moment about going to Alabama? Uh, I took a visit to Alabama. I did. I, not an official, but I took an unofficial. And you know, it was a great school. Uh, great facilities, great everything. You know, I met Coach Saban. Um, but, you know, I just wasn't feeling it. You know, I was, I was always at least in my heart. Well, well, let me ask you about the, the, your last season there. And, and how, how tough was it maybe mentally for you to kind of battle through an injury but still be out there for your guys? And, and what, what, what kind of stuff were you going through behind the scenes to kind of get yourself ready uh, for those game days? People just don't know, man. They just don't know. Uh, and I try not to uh, talk about it a lot, but I really show myself and my team, you know, in, in, in the circle, like, of the building, you know, that I'm not in it for the draft. And I wasn't in it to protect my draft status. If I was, I would have just sat out the rest of the season. You know, I wasn't worried about going first round of, you know, top 10, top 15. You know, I was really just trying to be there for my guys. I could easily, you know what I'm saying, hung a, hung a cleats up and probably got surgery on my ankle and it would have been good in a couple of weeks. Uh, but I just didn't want to miss any games. And so just, you know, behind closed doors, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, you know, you couldn't tell if I was limping out there. Fans don't really care about all that stuff. Uh, ankle swole, flared up. Um, but, you know, we got through it, and we, we didn't lose a game. So that's all that matters. You when have, did you feel speaking right? Of, yeah, like, speaking of moving, you, you've been all over the place. Uh, New Orleans, Houston, Florida. Back to Louisiana, now on to, on to Cleveland. Um, how supportive has your family been through everything? Oh, they've been very supportive. Even in my days at, uh, in Florida, IMG that one year, you know, they came to every home game. You know, say it wasn't at IMG. It's not a lot of people that come to the, to the home games because everybody comes from across the country. But, you know, my, my mom and my sister and my dad was we're always there. So I'm sure that they'll be at every Cleveland game. You know, I'll have to find a spot. Uh, where they can come <laughs> for the weekends, I know they're gonna be coming up. So uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. They've always had a great support system, and they're definitely gonna be a part of it. What's Greedy told you about Cleveland as a place to live? Yeah, <laughs> Greedy said, well, you know, uh, he says it's nice. Well, Greedy's a family man. You know, he's been with his he's been with his daughter and his and his and his girl, and just being up in Cleveland. Um, you know, I'm from Louisiana. I've never even been to Cleveland before. I never even thought about going to Cleveland before. So um, <laughs> he said it's, it's not as bad as you would see. Uh, it's, on the, it's on the lake. Um, downtown area is great. It's a great stadium. Um, you know, great people as well. So, and I'm excited to get up there for the first time. You will need a winter coat. I, I hate to I'm be the sure. bearer of bad news, but that, that <laughs> yeah. part will come in December. But and if you're playing in January, it doesn't matter. You don't feel the cold. Trust me. Right. especially right. when you're playing January football. <laughs> um, what's the best piece of advice that Ryan Clark's given you? You said you, you train with him. What's, he, what's the best piece of advice you've gotten? What has he told you about that little rivalry with the team that he used to play for? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big rivalry at that. You know, the division games, I know that they were always, you know, we've always been rivals with the Steelers. So, uh, you know, he's, he's really just told me, you know, just just be yourself, and you know, guys wish that they had their rookie year back. Um, so just just going going year one is really something to prove. You know, I think that I have a lot of stuff to prove to people. Uh, of course, every team that passed me up, and you know, being drafted 44th overall, that's really a big chip on my shoulder. Um, so you know, some guys may look at it as a, as a good thing. I do. You know, I'm, I'm truly blessed, but I do have a lot more to prove, and you know, I'm ready to put on that Browns jersey and get to work. One of the things that Andrew Barry said about what he liked about your game was the the versatility. What 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 has made you kind of a player that's been able to to play a lot of different spots uh, in that defensive backfield? Uh, well, I think my ability to learn, you know, all positions is is, is something that I pride myself in. 
Uh, you know, even right now, you know, I'm trying to learn every every secondary position. So I know that what the guy to the left and right of me is doing, um, and that, that can help me do my job. So I think that, you know, my ability to learn fast, think on my feet, um, and, of course, the defensive scheme uh, always has everything to do with it. And I'll just ask you one more thing. What have you learned about your potential role in this defense so far from, from what you've gathered, and what do you like about it? Um, yeah, it's a brand-new defense. Uh, my role, I don't know if I know exactly what my role would be. I know that I'm going to have to come in early and earn the spot. Um, that's before anything. i got to earn trust uh, with the vets, and i got to earn the spot with the coaches. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. You know, I'm doing that right now. Uh, in meetings and watching film every day. So, um, you know, the identity uh, that I'll have isn't, isn't, isn't there yet. But, you know, we, we are slowly figuring it out. Are you going to challenge, before we wrap up, are you going to challenge Miles Garrett to any weightlifting competitions? I will not be doing that. You know, he has that one. Um, I could challenge him to something else. We'll have to figure it out. But he definitely, I would not be partaking in that. <laughs> Grant. We, we appreciate a few minutes of your time, man. I, I know you're in the middle of a workout. We, we thank you for taking the time, and we wish you all the best of luck. Make sure you give Ryan Clark the business. Um, we did for a long time, and he, and he had the best of us for a little while, so we're hoping to repay that uh, with you and the rest of the guys here in 2020. Wish you all the best of luck and look forward to seeing you soon, my friend. Thank you, man. Will do. Appreciate it. Want to thank Grant Delpit for his time. Gribbs, big takeaways from Mr. Delpit's time with us today? I mean, he's, he's like every other guy we talked to LSU. Very confident, very uh, easygoing, uh, and then, but you know he's got that competitive edge to him. So we'll, we'll see what he's like on the, on the field. I, the one question I did want to ask him, I, I wonder if he was disappointed that he couldn't wear number seven in the pros. I mean, that's just – that's the, that's the, 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 the lack of – creativity with numbers you, you, you can have in, in this league. I, I might have suggested because it seems like he, he's taken it pretty personally. I, I might have suggested trying to, to uh, arrange a, a deal with Taki Taki to get 44 because it seems like that's something that's, that's – he, he's going to use that as motivation, I think, uh, to start his career because I, I think justifiably he, he thinks he probably should have gone a lot earlier in that draft. Yeah. No question about it. I mean, it, he uh, he buried it a little bit, but you could tell there is a there's an all there's a mountain on that shoulder. It's not a chip. That's, uh, that is for sure. Uh, we have some votes coming in today. Uh, owners meeting virtual uh, edition. Sky Judge, if you were an owner, would you vote for or against the Sky Judge or essentially the eighth man in the booth? I'm for it. Whatever, I mean, because I think you can just see so much more from that perspective. I mean, I think it makes the game better. I just want to know, Gibbs, do you have the, the – what powers will the Sky Judge have? That, that's, that's just – I, I want to know what, what is in their jurisdiction and what is not. Because I think that's a key part of this. I'm all for having them having a lot of power. But I'm just wondering if they're going to limit the powers of the Sky Judge. Well, and I don't want to bring stuff to a halt because we're reviewing every other play because the sky judge saw a guy that was right. just, you know, out of position. Um, that, that's something I think that is definitely going to be, have to be factored in. And I don't know, I've done, I've done some homework. I've looked into it. No one seems to be sure exactly how much power. I think it's the case of, are you going to approve it? And then if you're going to approve it, how much power then are you going to give that person? I, I, just, I also want to know where the Sky Judge is going to rank in the official power rankings. Like, you know, because obviously don't, don't these guys want to – you all want to be the referee. You all want to be the main guy. But ultimately, if the Sky Judge is overruling, isn't he the one – he or she the one with the ultimate power? Is that yeah. the best spot to be? No, that, that's 100% right on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I – yeah, that, that – a lot of questions still with that, but there be I, I animosity, think animosity between the on-field officials and the sky judge. I mean, do you have to rotate that so that that so you got to have the on-field and the mix of the the booth experience? That's a lot, a lot. I'm very curious about this. I mean, that's what that's what college basketball and the NBA. I mean, they have that fourth official that sits yeah. courtside that run. Yeah, I mean, and the next game he would be out, and someone else would be running that monitor. So. Yeah, I think you would almost have to have a rotation. I, I think that yeah. 
I don't know. I, I, I want to see it get approved and then we figure out the rest because yeah, I think, it's a good I, I think that's the best way to solve this pass interference problem. Yeah. I, I think it's just overall, I mean, why not? I mean, it's, it's going to make it better. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it, you're, you're ultimately hoping to make the product better. It just comes at maybe the only risk is slowing down the game more and that's what, not what you want to do. Yep. Correct. Uh, the other one up for a vote, the onside kick owners will vote to allow a team twice a game to follow a scoring play by running one play and trying to convert on fourth and 15 from the offense's 25 yard line. If the offense doesn't convert, the defensive team takes over on a short field. Like, not like, would you vote or not vote for that? Well, I mean, we uh, a previous BPA guest from earlier this year. We know how he feels about that. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I can't imagine the special teams folks want to see this because it eliminates a pretty big uh, weapon in their in their arsenal. And I, but if I'm talking about just pure fun factor. I mean, this, this makes the game more fun. And I, I, I think I, I, I may be less interested in seeing a losing team attempt it, but what about a winning team? Like that's just feeling, feeling like they got the right play for it, that feel like they got the hot hand, like a little make it, take it action. Like that, that is going to be – I want to see the first team that attempts this while, with a lead because I, I think that is fun. And I think the Kansas City Chiefs are my top candidate to do just that. <laughs> Because I want to figure out the math. Like, what's the what's the risk of start of start putting your defense out there? On I mean, obviously it's huge to put your defense out there on the twenty five yard line. And it's a momentum swing. Yeah, and I, I do think ultimately I don't love the ultimate resolution to this. I I would prefer maybe just going back to the old way we did off onside kicks. I think that maybe is better. But this is I mean this is a major shift. I mean this is I wouldn't call it gimmicky, but it it's. It's borderline gimmicky. I mean, it, it's, it's certainly, I mean, this is a major change to the rules of the game. And I, I think that's why I, I, I wonder if this will maybe be a preseason thing before they ever unleash this in the regular season. I, I just think it's such, it's such a big change. I mean, I, 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 I'll, I'll be surprised maybe if this, if this comes to, to be the, the way we're playing football in 2020. Yeah. All right, final thought from you. If you were the Jets who just signed Joe Flacco, would you have taken Joe Flacco or would you have taken Cam Newton if you were running the show there for the backup quarterback? I mean, if you're the Jets, you're all about the development of Sam Darnold. And Cam Newton is clearly way better than Joe Flacco. So I'll put that out there right now. I just wonder, would you? maybe you shouldn't worry about Sam Darnold being able to handle it. I, I would think – I think Sam Darnold would be one kind of so-so year away from needing a Cam Newton type of backup in his life, if that makes sense. I think right now, especially after what he dealt with last year with the mono and, and really didn't have like a full season, really hasn't had any good wide receivers there ever since he's been there. And I, I think you need to build the bright support system around him, and I, I'm not necessarily sure – and maybe I could be, I mean, if Cam was all in on being the mentor, then I think Cam is the better option. But I think Cam Newton is good enough to be starting in this league. And you don't want after week one, if, if Darnold throws two picks, to be just uh, under an avalanche of questions about the backup quarterback getting in the game. Flacco, you probably don't get that. I mean, I just think he's at a different stage of his career right now. I, I, just, I just think worry, Cam Newton, I, I worry he's not, even gonna, he's not even going to be ready for week one, it looks like. Yeah. Cam Newton should be starting somewhere. If he's healthy, he should be starting. And I, I but if I was bringing Cam, 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 if he's going to be a backup, he's got to be somewhere where the, the starting situation is either iffy or it's an established veteran and you're not going to maybe worry about being lumped into a controversy week two if the, if the quarterback doesn't perform very well. So yeah. I, I think that's the, that that's why I would I would lean Flacco, but I'm making it clear that Cam is the superior quarterback. I mean, it, so if you're going purely on get the best quarterback, Cam Cam is it, and Cam might be better than your current circuit. Yeah. Again, we wait and see what happens with Cam Newton, and it all comes down, I think, to being able to get Cam Newton in the building and get Cam Newton physicals throughout the NFL right. as to what's going on with that shoulder and with that 
arm. We want to thank Grant Delpit for all of his time today. Wish him the best of luck here in this virtual off season and in his upcoming rookie season. Thanks to Jeff McDaniel for all of his help. Uh, make sure you log on to clevelandbrowns.com or wherever you get your podcast. Like and subscribe today to the best podcast available. Uh, you can also check us out on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Browns. We are back with you next Tuesday, back to two times a week, starting next week as we move into June and move closer to the Browns season, whatever that may look like. <laughs> We will, we will continue to inch our way forward. For Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the best podcast available.